Welcome to Tea Time with Shaylee and Amber, the podcast where we talk about all the shit that your horse wants you to know and what you can do about it. Amber is a horse trainer and a personal results coach, certified in Theta and Semitic Breathwork. Shaylee is an animal communicator who also teaches communication. Both knowledge seekers with the intention of sharing that knowledge and hoping that we can encourage the listeners to do the same. Welcome to today's episode where we explore manifestation, fear, intuition, and the brain's focus on negativity. From the topic of donkey lessons to freezing water experiment, join us for a mix of insight, humor, and engaging discussions. Tune in for a dose of wisdom and laughter as always, and a ton of random nuts. See you in there. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. Last week, we released a controversial episode about certain triggers, certain um, riding tools, and horses biting, and boundaries, and things like that, and it's a pretty cool episode, so go check it out. Um, This week, we are, we don't really know what we're talking about. Amber just got back from a conference where she got all these like fun downloads that she might share. I have nothing to offer the world today, except, um, (laughs) except (laughs) that I have been talking with Michelle Mix, who I don't know if you guys remember her, if you listened to the episode, but um, she is an intuitive, she's kind of like a little jack of all trades. She does AccuScope and Bioscan and all this other stuff. Well, her recent thing is water, and I've been talking with her back and forth because she she kind of um, is really being fulfilled by the energy of water, and she has this machine that ionizes it, and she's nerding out hardcore and bought, like, a microscope and is, like, looking at, like, her blood before and after she drinks the water. Like, she's going deep with it, but – and then she's, like, you know – water is 99% whatever whatever so anyway she's really deep into it and so I of course being the person that I am um I'm like well isn't it just a belief system like you believe that this Kangen water machine is going to heal everything what if I held that same belief with regular water that I put my own energy into or something and so we had conversations around that And then I like sat with it a little bit and I'm like, you know what? I've been doing all this like theta stuff and I've been connecting with source energy and I'm going to test it out myself. So I got a little control glass of water and I got another little glass of water and I put my hand over one of them and I did my grounding process. I grounded, I went up into the light. I talked to source energy. I was like, basically like, source energy proved to me that water holds memory. Like I want to see it. And what was cool is that I saw this like energy go like in through my crown, down my arm, into my hand, and it pulled the water up into like a little hump. And I was like, okay, that's cool. And then I froze both of them. And like, then I like did my sessions and I forgot about them. And then I came back downstairs and I was like, oh my God, my water. And we'll have to insert a picture because I took the thing out and there's a little hump in it with all these ripples and I was shocked I was like oh my god it fucking worked (laughs) it totally worked and the other the control one is like it was completely flat like it looked like it it was in a different glass though which made me a little skeptical like I was like I can't just take this like of course I can't just be like oh yeah I'm amazing like it's cool I channel source energy I'm like but was it because one was in a round and one was in a square so I'm gonna have to play around with it but I will say it totally froze into like a little raised top I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it too I'll do it tonight and I'll use two of the same cups um for the control and for the what's that Got to use something shallow though, because like she's using a petri dish, and everyone that I've seen so far that's like doing the energy work over water, you have it like super shallow and you don't freeze it for that long. So, because okay. you want the water to be like, I guess, um, still flowing underneath it. I have, um, I have these little glass jars that are exactly the same I could use. I also kind of maybe want to play with talking bad to one and put, like, you know, how 
we did a challenge in my private group years and years ago where you, um, what exactly that we did, but it was I, the same idea where you have different jars and you label them, um, angry, sad, blah, 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 whatever, happy, blah, blah, blah. And then a neutral one where you pick them up daily and you talk to them like, you're so beautiful. You're so amazing. Da, 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 all the things. And then you speak differently to the other one. And was it water? I can't totally remember how it was, but the one you talked shit to, um, got moldy and gross and like mucky. Um, but I can't remember exactly how that happened. I have to remember and, and look it up, but it was, it was like the same idea. So it might be fun to play with freezing the water and like maybe talking bad to one and then a neutral one. And then I'm going to take one to the light. Maybe we'll cleanse and clear the good one and put all the mucky shit into the, the, the negative one. I don't know. We'll come up with something fun little experiment. Yeah. With it. Yeah. I thought it was super cool because I just used like two fingers because it was a small jar and I put like my two fingers over it. And then I was comparing the pictures and it was cool because the little like bump in the water was like right between where my fingers would have been. So oh. I kind of, and it froze in a ripple, which is wild to me. You see all the little ripples. I was like, wow, is this a real thing? Well, it's so funny too, that I see like a, I don't know, like anytime I try something new, I feel like I'm either not going to be able to do it or I have to do it a bunch of times before I like really believe in it, which is mm -hmm. so funny. But yeah, I saw it right in front of my eyes. It was something tangible that I could see. And I was like, nah, nah, I'm going to have to try it a few more times. <laughs> that's kind of like the um i'm gonna share my spoon oh yeah i got i um just me myself and i over here the editing five minutes. sitting with the people watching alone in front of my fireplace I um oops. So okay. I guess I'll be editing quite a bit today. Yeah, I sang um, to them while you were gone. <laughs> so I was at this uh business conference this weekend and it's mostly spirituality. So the whole idea is like the the balance of hustle and alignment and how alignment it always wins. And something interesting that they had said was, you know, obviously talking about vibration and your thoughts creating emotion, creating the vibration that you exist in and the things you can and cannot do and the things you can and cannot manifest. Um, and so spoon bending, spoon bending is a thing. So she, uh, she took us through a whole meditation. So like these things are like, like you can, like I'm shaking. Okay. Like you can't just like, like I'm, I'm trying really hard. Like, <laughs> like seriously, it's a, like a spoon. She takes through a meditation. And then at one point you pick up the spoon and you're just visualizing and you, uh, you get into this space where you're just flexing it. And then she's like, and the spoon is rubber. And then you, it's not really about the spoon. It's very matrix, right? It's not about the spoon. It's about what comes up around when you, if you can or cannot bend the spoon, can you let go of that being your end goal? Can it be about the meditation and like becoming, putting yourself in alignment or whatever? It's so crazy because at one point, right as she start, told us to pick up the spoon and a lot of people didn't bend it. Uh, she talked about a lot of people that don't bend it. Um, my little spoon went into so fast and so easy. But what's ironic is it was effortless. There was no effort. Like I didn't try to bend the spoon. I just felt it. All of a sudden it was like, breathe. And I was like, what, dude? I immediately wanted to hide my spoon in shame. I was ashamed that I bent my spoon because I was worried that people around me had not bent their spoon and that I was going to make them feel bad. So ironically, it wasn't about the spoon. It was about if I can manifest the thing I want. If I can have abundance of whether it's money or, you know, wealth in like your accomplishments or whatever it is, the immediate emotion that would come up would be shame, 
which ironically, I've been trying to figure out for the last two months, why the heck I am so out of whack? Why I'm like, I don't feel intuitive anymore. Like I just feel all over the place. I don't want to exercise. I, I there are all these things. And it was almost like we reached this place of having so much success and so much fun. And there was so much impact in our groups and our workshops and stuff that it triggered this like response in me that wanted to shut it down. And so I think that's what was happening. And when I looked deeper at it, we kept going in the meditation. She actually took you back to birth, which I thought was interesting. And before, so I was like, well, Shaylee would, Shaylee needs to be here. She would just love this. Um, and you go all the way back and all the things. And what I realized was I had a belief that if I had achieved certain things, I would make people around me feel bad. And then they would either leave or would not want to connect with me. And so my primal human need for connection was feeling threatened. Therefore, I decided my little subconscious little guy decided to tell me a big fat lie <laughs> that, you know, you can't, you can't be too fit. You can't have success. You can't be intuitive. You can't want. Okay. So that's where I was at. And then I bet my little... Bet my little spoony spoon I actually got the spoon for you because they put spoons under all of the chairs. And I was like, Shaylee needs to do the spoon bending. We should, oh my God, we should take people in our tea time through the spoon bending exercise. That's a great idea. Um, But anyways, like it's a thing. So when you're doing things in relationship with your horse or in relationship with vibration of water or like, it's not about the thing. It's about what can come up for you around the thing. So like you even saying it was successful, but I didn't believe it. No, nope, that's silly. Like that, that's probably because it was a different cup or maybe I bumped the, refri- or the freezer or when obviously things don't freeze in a ripple. I don't know, unless the bottom of your cup is rippled, like that's not how it works because the liquid settles in the freezer and then it freezes flat. It doesn't just ripple. It would have to be vibrating at a certain level to freeze in such a manner. So their spoon and the water, same, same. It's all the same shit. So when you're doing life out there, everyone, it's not about the thing you're doing. It's about what comes up around it for you. Dig around in there and see if you can get curious and ask yourself, like, why can't I bend my spoon right away? Why can't I be in alignment? Why can't I be successful without worrying if the other people are around And it was interesting because she had said, and this is like a room of 900 people at various levels of achievement within their business. And the people that came up on stage were very much like talking about all the juicy shit of all the things. And it was so interesting because um, someone had brought up that it's so easy for us when we talk about, they didn't say this in regards to horses, but I put everything into context with horses. So when you're looking and you're thinking of like relationship is a mirror, horses are our mirrors, all the things that we talk about when we're talking about when you see that in someone else, it's a reflection back to you about you. We always pick out the shitty stuff. Do you notice that? Oh, I'm anxious or I'm I'm mad or I'm judgy or I'm whatever, but it goes both ways. So the challenge for you guys is to, in fact, When you see good in someone else, when you see love in someone else, when you see someone that you admire, know that the only reason you can recognize that stuff is because that is you seeing yourself in someone else. So it goes both ways, but I don't think that people spend time going, oh, wow, that person's, you know, really loving and caring. Oh, I can only, only recognize that because I also am loving and caring. So that was another little like, oh. Oh, why do we never talk about that, do we? So those are my two little ranty rants about my little seminar. (laughs) That's wild, actually, because we totally don't. We totally do go to like the negative thing. I was reading something in one of my like neuroscience books. I'm going to totally butcher it. So the vagueness of it was like, our brains are designed to look at the negative first. Like there's something that is literally innately within our brains where you look at I think it's because we're problem solving brain so it's like we see the thing that's wrong and then we're trying to like how to fix it how to change it how to like we go into like that problem solving which I think is tied to the ego because like the spiritual teachers that you listen to like Eckhart Tolle and Abraham Hicks like they talk about how um 
oh my god I just lost my train of thought how did that just happen to me <laughs> uh, they talk about the fuck was I just gonna say um <laughs> well our brain if things are wrong and we're scanning and searching it's because it's survival right you have to look for the things that are wrong so that you can fix them so we don't starve to death or we don't freeze to death or like we still have that like primal part of our brain that searches for that and I think ego is sort of tied into that safety piece whether it's safety of socially you know what I mean or physically like it it does the same work for us yes that's what I was gonna say the ego (laughs) because the ego um like there was something I was reading in one of Eckhart Tolle's book where he's like, the ego believes that like, it's going to die. Like if you don't, if you're like sitting with pain in your body and you can fully surrender to the pain and your mind doesn't have a story about it, you freak out a little bit because your ego like is connected to the pain and that's how it controls you. And like the egoic piece of your brain. So I could imagine on a smaller level, it's like that with our like happy thoughts where the ego is like, you know, it's like the angel and the devil on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And also there's this fear of, I know we had talked about that a lot of people have a fear, fear of failure, but more people than I think are aware of it, have a fear of success, even, you know, success in relationships, success in, you know, in your work environment, success, even in partnership with your horse. Because if you're successful and you're in this place of joy and happiness and satisfaction, you know, that can be taken away and everyone's had that experience and that's really hard. But if you just stay in this neutral, really safe place, you reduce the risk of feeling disappointment, of feeling pain, of feeling hurt, of feeling angry, whatever, significantly, you stay pretty unsatisfied with your life. (laughs) But a lot of people are pretty unsatisfied with their life to stay safe. And uh, we had one of our speakers went into speaking about fear and why people don't take those next steps into becoming vulnerable or taking the next step in a relationship or trying something different with their horse or whatever it is. And she said, fear is there and it's fine. Like you don't want to get rid of it. You just notice it. And she said, more often than not, people will use that as an excuse to stop. They, oh, it means it's my gut. It means it's not right. It means whatever. And she's like, but you have to really pause when fear comes and sit with it. And you can find a statement that represents the fear that you're having. So I'm afraid of, you know, I don't know, getting on my horse, right? Obviously, if your horse is bronking you off and giving you all the signs as to why you shouldn't get on, like don't fucking get on. But if your horse is standing calmly with its foot cocked and it's like eh, asleep and comfortable and you're like, what is it within me right now that's coming up that's not actively being proven in my 3D world around me that doesn't match up with the fear I'm experiencing, whether it's even, you know, standing in front of a group of people and talking or, you know, starting a podcast or, you know, doing something, starting a relationship, whatever it is, it's like you sit with it and you find the statement, you know, I'm afraid of. And they had us do this exercise. I can't even remember what mine was. They had us do an exercise where you say the statement and then you take a really big, deep breath in and then you exhale it and you clear all the way out through like every last ounce of your breath. And then you inhale and you say the statement again and you can do, you did it. We did it like three times and then you checked in and you could actually tell the fear would, the fear, the anxiousness, the whatever was like gone. And she's like, because when you introduce the life force and the prana and the breath into the statement, it reveals whether or not it's true. So that might be an interesting game to play with things that we always question. Is this intuitive or is it my fear and my ego coming up? You know what I mean? Is it just this like, blah? and several different ways we sort of talked about is truth. Usually intuition usually kind of whispers. I feel like I've had it yell at me when I was, it wasn't in like an emergency situation, but it was almost like my guys were like, oh, like. Oh my God. Or my horses. Well, sometimes they, they get loud with me sometimes, but I need that. But, you know, usually if it's just fear and anxiousness and old stories, it's kind of like it blares loud and there's a lot of emotion attached to it. But if it's truth, intuition, whatever, it's like this quiet knowing that you have, and it's usually really fast. And the interesting, I would say to play with is maybe find a statement around the thing you're trying to figure out if it's 
intuition or if it's just, I'm not supposed to be doing a thing and state it and then breathe really deep and slow and complete and then state it again, do it three or four times and then check in with your body and go, what is this? Is this truth or is this ego trying to keep me safe? And it was wild because people were like, oh my God, like it was just wild. So it's an interesting exercise to play with. I'll have to go live tomorrow in 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 the tea time membership because I was thinking about all these things and I was like, oh, we need to go talk about this stuff. So that was a little fun thing we did. That makes a lot of sense too, just thinking about like what I've learned through like doing some of Jane Pike's work um, as I was part of her membership because she talks about how we, once you label something, so like you get scared of something, it creates a fear. So like you slam on the brakes because someone pulls out in front of you and everything locks up in your body and you're like, wow, that was really scary. And you label that your nervous system and your brain remembers that. And then when your body moves in a different way, even if you're just like walking up a mounting block or whatever, and you trigger those same muscles, your body immediately goes, I'm scared because like your nervous system is super smart and it remembers that. So for her, like her work is focusing on two points of the body and introducing movement, but it would make a lot of sense to me if you're focusing on your breath, you're thinking of like the breath coming, you know, like in your nose and your chest and it's going out through your feet. So you kind of are creating those two points and bringing sensory awareness to the body, which is checking in with your nervous system on a literal level and then rechecking in with yourself and saying like, is this actually how I feel right now or, or isn't it? So yeah, that's awesome. It was so fun. So good. So good. So many things happened. I can't even remember all of them. It was really magical, but I will say I did in fact completely manifest a trip to Sedona in an Airbnb for three nights and it was effortless. Cool. So the situation goes as such. I, <laughs> you had to do one thing scary in your business. And if, we shared it with a partner. Actually, you wrote down three things that you would do that would frighten you in your business. And you shared it with a partner and you switched papers. They got to choose which one you had to do by the end of the three days. So there's oh a, there's a next level that you can join in this um, group and it's a um, year long membership. It's quite, quite the investment. And it scared me. And it was scary to join the first one, which was much less and so I had written that in there and some other like raised prices, other things that were like, eh. and my partner was like, oh, that's the one. And I was like, because they, I know that they offer it at these live events. And so um, once you did the scary thing, you got to put your name on the paper and write what you did and put it in this bowl. So there's 900 people there. This bowl is filled with little papers and they check to make sure a lot of people like launched a program or started this or whatever. And, and they would check. And so the very last day or well, the night before my roommate that I had um, met and we stayed together was like, did you do your thing? And I had joined next level and I did it. The, the moment they announced it, I walked straight back there and I was like, yes. And I was like, yeah, she's like, did you put it in the bowl? And I was like, I, there are so many papers in that bowl. I do not win things like that. Like that was my hardcore belief. I do not win things like that. That is not a thing. There was great shit on there too. There was no reason why I could just put my name in and not care. I just wasn't even going to put my name in. And she ripped my little paper out of my hand. And she's like, you are putting your name in that bowl. And if either of us win the trip to Sedona, then we are taking each other. And I was like, can Shaylee come? And she, she was like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And so she, we take the papers up and I held my little paper in my head and I went for the highest and best good. So it is. And I stuck it in the bowl completely unattached. Well, the next day, I'm not even paying attention. He's picking three people at one time because he was doing it randomly through the whole weekend. It was the last time they were going to pull names. He pulls three names out. And I am over here not even paying attention, helping the girl next to me post her first, first reel because she was said she wants to post on social. And so I'm like here helping her edit. And we're like right here. And I'm like in her phone, not even knowing what's going on. They're screaming and shit. And, I, and she looks up at me and she's like, that's your name. And I was like, what's my name? And she's like, he just called your name. And I was like, what? She's like, he called your name. And I was like, and so I walked up there and I was like, oh my God. So I'm standing there with three other people and this big ass wheel. They got the like the, the wheel of Jeopardy fortune, whatever the hell it is. And it was like so ridiculous. They put, And the girl in front of me spins and she gets like a camera or something. And, um, and I got up there and I was like, I did not attach to wanting Sedona. I was like, 
highest and best. And I just spun it. It barely spun. Like I was like, oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> I just was a lot heavier than I thought it was going to be. And it literally like went around only like twice. And then, so the pegs were offset from the actual things, right? So no, it didn't matter if you were in the pegs. It didn't necessarily, you were on the thing. So it hit the peg with a sweatshirt and also Sedona. And it went to the sweatshirt and everybody, like the whole, I'm mean, one of my friends that I saw there that I didn't even know was going to be there recorded it. And everyone froze and it was like silent. And then it like, like back, it was like Sedona. And the whole room was like, oh. and I was like, what the fuck just happened? And I was like, I already know, right? You set the intention. The universe knows what you want. You fucking let it go. Highest and best. Don't care. Totally detached the outcome. I literally didn't think I was going to win. And I didn't care if I won. In my head, I'm like, that's all right. I'll make so much money. I can just go rent a Airbnb in Sedona. You know, like it was just out of my mind completely through the whole process. And it was like, boom, there you go. And the universe was like, see? And I was like, okay, fine. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, so wild. That's so cool. And you got a hat that you've been wanting to get. Yes, I did. And I didn't love it actually when I got it because it was just a fun experience for me and my sister to go like customize these hats. Um, It's not the best quality. I'm talking to her. I'm sorry. My other hats are just like, they get in my head and no nothing, a windstorm, tornadoes, nothing can happen to knock my hats off my head. This one is not like necessarily the highest quality. I should bring her on and show everyone to her. Um, She's really cute. Everyone loves her but now it's my fucking lucky hat look at that's thunder's feathers are on there and my raven that i hang out with um yeah and i was like well the first night i hung out with her we did some medicine and it was on my birthday and i was like i'm gonna bond with this hat but she kept falling off into the sand and i was like things that are difficult and a pain in my ass in my life cannot stay <laughs> you do not fit in my head it's frustrating and i don't like it and then i took took her to this thing and I wore every day and I probably got more compliments on that hat than I have ever on anything in my entire life so I was like and then I won and I was like well now you're my lucky hat so I guess you're gonna have to stay. you're staying I'll okay. keep you I'll keep you you can come with me uh so funny and she's your lucky hat and she, like needs you to be okay if she's not paying attention to you she's like you gotta be okay with or without me <laughs> with or without me on your head <laughs> Sometimes I want to jump off and go in the sand and you're going to have to be okay with that. Like, damn. Okay. Yeah. I should exactly. probably <laughs> do we want to keep going or do we want to save the donk bites donk bites for next week after we process a little bit more? Oh yeah. Oh my God. I need, yeah, we'll save it for next week. But what I will say about it is that my donkey went rage mode again on one of my horses, except for this time, it was a little too close for comfort. And it like, I mean, I don't know, he shredded Biggie's neck a couple of times, but never like this. And I'm hating him right now, actually, because I'm like flushing the wound out and it freaking stinks and it's deep and like I'm having to deal with it like twice a day and it's this whole thing. I probably should have it, gotten it stitched up, but I found it on a Sunday and it's this whole thing. But um, the non-boring part of that, obviously, one part is like, you know, the real part of it and it's just mm -hmm. life with horses. <laughs> and then the non-boring part is that the donkey has so many ties to a previous dog of mine who passed away with lessons and he's carrying on the lessons forward, which I learned the other day. He's trying to, he was trying to carry on the lessons from, do you guys remember Otis, the bird that almost killed my marriage? And I had to lovingly send him on his way. Um, he came with my dog's lessons and I couldn't stand him. So he found a home that loves him. And well, and my husband couldn't stand it. He was like attacking everyone. Okay. He was out for blood. He was bloodthirsty and psycho. And it's hilarious because I knew that he wasn't happy with me. And I was just like, I was just like his like person on his way to the next person, but I didn't want to like believe that. So he just kept getting more aggressive and more aggressive until I finally found his home. And now like the people message me every once in a while. They're like, he's such a blessing. He knows so many words. He's such an angel. He never bites us. And I'm like, of course he doesn't. <laughs> he's such a dick over here. But 
I'm wondering if the donkey is that way because he, um, every time he strikes, every time he strikes again, um, it gets worse and worse. And he's kind of in this weird space. So yeah, I have a lot to say about that. There's so many parallels. There's so many lessons, but it would be like a whole nother. It's going to be a long time. I also feel like it needs more time to marinate, but give we're given a little taste test, little tasty taste. What we really want you guys to do is put your energy into water and freeze it and let us know what happens. Tag us in your pictures. Yes, do that for sure. Okay. Do you feel complete? See you guys later. <laughs> yeah, okay. Is that a yes? <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye everyone. Ha, 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 ha.